Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how I set up my TI Inspire to um, evaluate scalar line integrals if I'm doing a lot of them. So like in a homework assignment or a problem set or something like that. Um, and I actually do this not on the calculator page. I do it on a notes page. So this is a little different from what maybe you're used to. So it's menu and then option six is notes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take advantage of something the calculator has called math boxes. And they are uh, these fields that kind of dynamically update everything. Um, and it's pretty awesome. So first what I'm going to do is set it up so that I can tell it what the path is. So to do that, I'm going to use a math box. So it's menu three, I need to insert um, a math box. So for me, I can just press command M to quickly get those. And that's what I'm probably going to do for the rest of the video. Um, but if not, you can just continually press menu three one and it'll get there really fast. So first I'm going to tell it what X is equal to. So Notice I'm not doing x of t, I'm just doing x colon equals, and then it's going to be some function of t, but because of what we're doing, I don't need it to know that it's a function of t, I just need it to store that value. So for example, um, maybe it is just t. And you can see it stored it as t, so this is how it's telling you that that happened. And then I need to tell it what y is, again, it's just colon equals, which for you is control, and then the templates button, uh, I'm going to say 2t. And then z, so the first example that I'm going to do is actually two-dimensional, so I'm just going to say z is zero at this point, because you can do that, and then it doesn't really impact what happens. So now I'm going to tell it what the function is. So function, or I could just say f. So I need another math box. Oh, I should mention, when you're in a math box, when you press enter, it just creates another math box. Um, so once you do the first one, you can punch these in pretty quickly. So here I had to press command M or it's menu, menu three, one, just like solve. Um, okay, so function, and I'm just gonna call it F, not of X, Y, and Z, just F and colon equals. And so for this first example, I'm gonna make my function one plus X times Y squared. So this, if you're um, in my class and you're on notes eight, this is just the problem from uh, page one that I'm doing. I'm going to press enter and it will store this. Okay, so that's actually everything I need to do. And now I'm going to just find the line. Oh, no, it's not everything I need to do. I need to know the T bounds. So I'm going to say bounds and uh, do a math box here. So T0 set equal to, initially it's going to be zero. And then T1 and uh, we're going to go from zero to one, I guess. And this. Okay, so now I'm gonna tell it to do the line integral for me. So I've actually stored x, y, and z. It knows what those are. Um, I've stored the function, it knows what that is. I've got the bounds. So the line integral is gonna be, so I need a math box and so it's an integral and it's gonna be the integral from, so uh, the var key still works. So t0 to t1. And then what we do is um, f, and you can see what happened with the math boxes is, is when I typed in one plus x times y squared, uh, the math box looked up what x and y were and substituted them in and got this. So f is already, it, it's in terms of t, which is what we need to do. I should have mentioned that when I did it, but I just remembered uh, times. So we need to get the norm of, uh, r prime so let's see norm so you can actually access the calculator functions they're uh, option six here when you do that it kind of like takes you to almost the calculator screen uh, menu so it's going to be seven and then option seven is a norm and enter so that was to in case i went too fast it's menu option six takes you to what you're kind of used to i guess um, and then option seven is for vectors, and then option seven is for norms, but I already did it, so I'm gonna escape out of here. Okay, so I need the norm of the derivative. So this is, it's kind of complicated, but you only need to do it once. So a derivative with respect to t of, I need the vector, so it's control, and then open parentheses, gives me these brackets, and then x comma y comma z, right? So that's R, if I were to write R, it would be just like the X component, the Y component, the Z component. So I'm going to take the derivative of that. So in there is R prime. I'm finding the norm of that. Um, and then I'm going to integrate with respect to T and press 
enter, and it just spits out the answer. I'm going to delete this math box because I don't need it. Okay, so once this is set up, what I can do is, now I'm going to look at the first example that's on page two of the notes. So for this, I need to change it up. So I'm going to change x into 2t, press enter. The main thing that I see people uh, mess up on these, and I do it a lot, is they forget after changing it to press enter. Like, it'll let you leave this box without pressing enter. And you see how it doesn't have an arrow and then what it's equal to? That means we didn't actually evaluate it. We just kind of retyped it. And then here, 2 minus 2t. So if you watch what happens to f when I press enter here, oops, nope, sorry, I have the wrong f there. Um, if I, let's change this. Okay, so x times y plus y plus z. Okay, so that's f of x, y, z. Press enter. The bounds, I'm told in the problem, are still 0 and 1. When I get down to the bottom, it evaluated the line integral for me. So it's pretty cool. Um, it's set up. You can feed it. As long as you have the correct setup for your problem, uh, you can give it whatever you want, and it'll work it out for you. So uh, I highly recommend this. Uh, maybe save it as its own document. I never save it. I just make it every time. Um, but it's a lot faster on the computer than it is on the handheld. So I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.